The airport can be a very overwhelming and intimidating experience, especially if you're gonna be traveling alone for the first time. But if you're prepared and know what to expect before entering the airport, it'll go a long way in helping you relieve some stress and anxiety that you might be feeling. So that's why in this video, I'll be sharing some tips as well as what you can expect once you're at the airport if you'll be flying alone for the first time. Let's go. Dream vacations start here. So this video is actually the second video in a two-part series I'm doing about flying alone for the first time. In the first video, I'll cover some tips about how to prepare before you go to the airport. So if you wanna catch that video, just click the link here above, where I also post it at the end of the video, as well as in the video description. But today's video is all about tips on how to prepare yourself once you're at the airport. So let's get into it. The first tip I have for you is to arrive early at the airport. This might sound simple, but as a person who'll be flying alone for the first time, it's important. You never know what you can expect at the airport, but I can assure you, it'll never go as you think it will. Arriving early makes a surprise of long check-in and security lines, or even leaving something in the car, a lot less stressful. My recommendation for how early you should arrive at an airport is two hours for domestic flights and three hours for international flights. If it's gonna be your first time ever at an airport, then maybe give yourself even more time. And if you need a step-by-step -step process of how to navigate an airport for the first time, I do have a video on that and you can find that video linked in the video description. The second tip I have for you is to have one spot for all your important and essential items. When going through the airport process, you may have to take out your ID and passport more than once, so it can be easy to place those items in different areas each time you take out your ID. So it's important to designate one area to keep your passport, boarding passes, and check luggage receipts in one area, so you don't end up in a panic mode thinking you've lost something important. I like to use this travel pouch when I travel internationally. It goes around my neck and tucks inside my shirt so that everything is together and safe from theft. I also like to use this travel backpack that has an anti-theft pouch in the back. And this pouch just sits against your back when worn to keep everything together and safe. I'll link these products in the description if you're interested in picking up these items for your trip. The next tip is to make taking things out for security as easy as possible. If you're going to be packing toiletries or makeup or really anything that contains a liquid gel or aerosol, you're going to be limited in what you can pack if you're going to be carrying those items in a carry-on or personal item bag. The rule you'll need to know is the 311 rule. It states that you can carry a liquid, gel, or aerosol that are in 3.4 ounce containers or less in one clear quart size bag per passenger. You have to take out your bag of liquids and place it in one of the security bins for screening, so make sure you have it in a place that's easy to get to, like the very top of your carry-on bag. Now, if you're going to be checking a bag, then you might want to consider placing your liquids and gels in there, as there are no limitations to how much you can carry in a checked bag. So if you want to bring your full-size shampoo and body wash, then pack those in a checked bag. The other thing you have to do when going through security is take off your shoes, belts, jackets, and sometimes jewelry, depending on how much metal is in them, and place them in the bins as well as any electronics larger than a cell phone. With that being said, you'll want to have a plan to be able to do this easily. Wear slip-off shoes that can be easily taken on and off, and a good hack that you can do is if you're wearing a jacket is to place your phone, jewelry, belts, and anything small enough to fit in your jacket pocket and place it in the bin. That way, all your stuff is together and covered and not scattered throughout the bin. If I'm not wearing a jacket, I usually just place all these things in my personal item bag to be x-rayed. That way I don't have to worry about taking anything out other than my laptop and bag of liquids. Another tip to help reduce your stress at the airport is to find your own space. Airports can be big and busy, so choosing a spot to sit and relax before your flight is important. Stay at your gate, and if you can, situate yourself near a screen that lists the departure flight so that you can be aware of any delays or gate changes. Or if the gate is crowded and there's no place to sit, find another place that is quiet and make sure you're signed up to receive text messages from the airline or have the airline's app to inform you of any changes or delays. I would recommend returning back to your gate at least 30 minutes before your flight's departure as that is when boarding usually begins. The next tip I have for you is to stay hydrated. The air inside of a plane is very dry and it can leave you feeling dehydrated and tired. While you can't take a bottle of water with you through security, you can take an empty water bottle and fill it up once you're through security. Or there are places to buy food and drinks once you're through security and in the secured area. And anything you buy in this area can be taken on the plane with you. Just be mindful of anything that has a strong aroma as the rest of the people on your flight will be able to smell it too. If everything has gone smoothly for you and you end up finding yourself early at your departing gate, the next tip I have for you is to bring items to entertain yourself. Pack a book, a magazine, a tablet, or maybe bring your laptop to do some work on. In either case, having something to do while you're waiting can help keep you entertained or help keep your mind off the flight if you're nervous about flying. Also, be sure to download game apps that can be used offline. 
remember to do this before you get on the plane because your service will likely not be powerful enough to download apps before takeoff in the cabin. This goes for music as well. Sometimes to save storage on your phone, songs will be downloaded to the cloud instead of directly on your phone. When it comes time to switch your phone to airplane mode, suddenly most of your music library is gone. So be sure to download the music you want before boarding. If it's going to be your first time flying alone, be aware of the flight safety demonstration the flight attendants will conduct before takeoff. Hearing the different emergency situations can tend to induce anxiety and fear in some people, but actually hearing what to do in an emergency and being prepared is the most comfortable thing you can do. Another tip I have is to bring a pen, wired headphones, and a portable phone charger. If you're traveling internationally, you have to fill out forms on the plane for customs, and flight attendants don't usually walk around handing out pens. Even if you're traveling domestically, you may want to do things like a journal, a puzzle, or work, so having a pen is essential. Now I realize that most people do not have wired headphones anymore, but some planes do not have an easy way to connect Bluetooth headphones to the plane's in-flight entertainment system. So for longer flights where you may want to watch a movie or so, you may not be able to access the audio for it unless you have wired headphones. So for that reason, it's good to bring a pair. If you're planning just to use your phone or tablet for entertainment, then your wireless headphones will do. However, you may want to consider noise canceling headphones to help eliminate any noises around you. Having a portable charger is essential in my opinion, not just for entertainment purposes, but for safety purposes as well. You don't want to get to your destination with a dead phone where you can't contact anyone. Now, depending on the airline and the type of seat you have, there are available USB ports that you can plug into, but I've been on flights where the USB port doesn't work at my seat and I'm left having to turn off my phone to reserve battery. Don't let that happen to you. Well, I hope this video was helpful to you. Make sure you check out the video description and show notes to find all the available links I mentioned. And if you want to see part one of this series or how to navigate your first time at an airport, just click or tap the screen next to me to view them. Thank you so much for watching this one, and I can't wait to see you in a future video.